Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain, and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now, for reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And do you want to pick what videos I make? Then consider joining the Once Upon an Island Patreon. The patrons pick every month what videos I make, like this one, and get to watch everything up to six months before it ever releases on YouTube. So consider joining them for all those benefits. Thank you for your support. Who will have what it takes to outwit, outplay, and outlast all the rest? This is Survivor 42. Mary Ann, a 23-year-old seminary student, was a castaway on Survivor's 42nd season, Survivor 42. No one on this season has seen Survivor 41, and Jeff tells us right from the beginning, this season is almost a carbon copy of Survivor 41 in terms of twists and format. So how does Marianne navigate these unknown waters while also dealing with the perception of being so young in a game that hasn't seen a winner who is under 24 since season 23, AKA a season that aired 11 years prior? Let's find out. So what is that format of Survivor 41 that is being copied here? That is three tribes, no tribe swaps, 26 days, the shot in the dark twist, the do or die twist, the hourglass twist, beware advantages, summit island, and other seemingly questionable decisions. If you aren't familiar with season 41, that is okay. I will tell you about these twists as we go, but if you are already familiar, then expect a lot of deja vu. Marianne is on the orange Taku tribe with Jackson, Mariah, Omer, Lindsay, and Jonathan. The first time she gets to speak to us is when she says, Survivor is a lot like a roller coaster. Right now, it feels like a roller coaster. The strap is on, the people have done their final check, and the roller coaster just went like, and it's now just starting to move. And in this moment, you have to decide, are you gonna raise your hands and have the experience of your lifetime, or are you gonna close your eyes and regret that for your life? My hands are gonna be raised, and I'm gonna be screaming with everyone on this whatever ride this is. Marianne is a ball of energy, lover or hater. Survivor also is currently in an era of constantly comparing itself to different everyday events, like driving a car, being a passenger in a plane, popping popcorn in the microwave, or in Marianne's analogy, riding a roller coaster. It gets a bit excessive as there is a new one seemingly every single episode, but the important one to note is Marianne's. But yes, Marianne is a ball of energy and here is her talking to Jeff for the first time after landing on the beach. It's like you dream about this, you know? You dream about like going on Survivor and then you're like, and all your friends are like, Marianne, you're not gonna make it on Survivor, like so many people. And then it's like, you're here. And then it's like, like, you know, like you're here and like you're there and like I'm here and like you're just like, like I just wanna like jump up, run, scream. Ah, oh, it's so hard to keep it in. <laughs> Jeff then says Survivor is like the monster in a horror movie. I, I told you the show loves comparing itself. And apparently the monster is hungry, whatever that means. The three tribes then have a reward challenge for a machete, pot, and flint. And despite getting an incredible lead, Mariah blows it for the tribe. But don't fret just yet. The two losing tribes are given a second chance when they get to solve a triangle puzzle where they have to count how many triangles are in this shape. If they guess correctly, they get their pot, flint, and machete. Jonathan tries to help where he counts 11 triangles, and Omer's like, yeah, I've counted over 30. And Jonathan's like, well, I'm out of my league, so I'm just gonna go work on the shelter instead. So Marianne, Omer, and Lindsay attempt to solve it, and... We have the flint, we have the machete, and we have the pot. And it's so funny how low your standards go so quickly. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got this is the best day of my 
right. They were successful, but then a boat shows up and someone from each tribe is forced to go to an island. And Marianne says, uh, I know I shouldn't go because it puts a target on my back because people will assume I have an advantage, but I really want to go. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a risky move that will heavily depend on how she handles it when she gets back to camp. Upon arriving on Summit Island, her, Drea, and Jenny all have to hike to the top, and while going up, we get Marianne's backstory and a lot of insight into who she is. When I told my mom I was first interested in Survivor, she was like, Marianne, why are you interested in this show? But the reason why I think I'm here is because I've always struggled with like self-esteem issues because I was a pretty weird kid growing up. And like Survivor is a way where not only I can go and test my own limits, but I can show to people as well. It's like, hey, like, look at you. You're someone who's weird, who didn't have to change themselves to succeed. And like, maybe there's someone who's watching this and needs that. And I want to be like, hey, I'm here. I'm weird. You can be weird too, and you can win. I truly want Survivor to be such a big experience for me. It's like the million dollars, I don't really care about that. It's the title of Soul Survivor, and it's the growth that you get to get to that title. That's what I'm here for. Now, unlike Survivor 41, Survivor 42 is loaded with players saying what I would call winner quotes. What we heard from Marianne was her winner quote. When they hike to the top, everyone is forced to make a decision without talking to the others. So basically their choice is to risk their vote or protect their vote. As long as one person protects their vote, then everyone who risks it gets an extra vote. But if everyone risks their vote, then no one has a vote. In fact, they all lose their vote. So Drea and Marianne risk it and Jenny doesn't. So those two get an extra vote. Back at camp, we get no follow up on what people think about Marianne being gone and whether her target has increased or not because surprise, Jeff pops onto the beach and says, hello there fellow kids. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but uh, one of you lied to production until the day before the game started about medication and we fear your life is in danger. This person is Jackson and Marianne balls as he leaves. Having lost a player before the first tribal is not great as they are already in a numbers deficit due to no fault of their own. And at the immunity challenge, it all comes down to the puzzle at the end that Marianne and Omar are working on together and... Jeff, do we have it? Talk. We got it. Has it. Talk. 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 And that's it for the premiere of Survivor 42, and unlike 41, despite it being copied and pasted in format, we're getting a much more balanced and visible view of everyone in this season. What we have learned from Marianne is that she is clearly an emotive person who wears their heart on their sleeve, is Christian, and is kind of a confessional queen. However, her overabundance of energy could wear on others as they lack food and sleep. So how can she balance this and pull it off? Let's find out. Episode 2 begins with Marianne working around the camp, but doing it in such a way that Jonathan, aka a real life Thor, is a bit scared of her. Here's Marianne! Oh! <laughs> Hi, I'm Marianne from Survivor, and you're watching CBS! Do, 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 do! Oh my god. Ayo, 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 ayo! What? As I've said previously, Marianne is a ball of energy. I can't say it enough because she just is all of the time. And while this might be endearing to us as an audience, apparently her tribe is already getting a little worn down by this. As Mariah says, Marianne going 100 miles per hour all the time except for when she's sleeping is a bit draining and even Lindsay agrees. But then Omer has an open discussion with his tribe about his Muslim faith and how he will be randomly praying throughout the day and this does not mean he's looking for idols. Marion is kind enough to offer and actually make Omer a prayer mat from palm fronds. Now despite Marion getting on Mariah and Lindsay's nerves, Jonathan says, I actually love Marion Spunk, and it actually sounds like Mariah might be next to go. We go to the immunity challenge, and as it turns out, Zach from the Blue Ica tribe was voted out last episode. Now you might be asking, who cares? What does this mean for this story? And it's kind of a big whatever when looking at Marion's game, but then she says something that makes me recall a certain Billy and Candace situation from Cook Islands. Zach voted out. Oh, your crush. I told my tribe, and I guess I'll tell all of you, Zach is like every type of white guy that I have a crush on, so <laughs> there goes that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So a blossoming love affair is over? No, not on Survivor, though. If we met like on a tribe swap, connected after, and then after this is over, <laughs> I have a 100% rejection rate with all the guys I've liked, so I was like, oh. you know, I focus on the game now, 
but a little part of me was like, <laughs> How Marianne became Billy and Zach became Candace, I have no idea. So anyways, despite it being known that Jonathan is bad at puzzles, the tribe puts him in charge of leading them. So of course they lose immunity. Back at camp, the discussion is basically centered on Marianne or Mariah to be voted out next. Essentially what the conversation boils down to is people being like, well, Mariah is probably bad for us in the short term, whereas we feel like we can't trust Marianne in the long term. She might burn us. Now it isn't 100% clear what they mean by this as we still have no idea if anyone knows about her extra vote or really why they think she will burn them. Either way, Marianne's social standing on Taku is not great. Marion then begins to panic and goes looking for an idol, which leads to... I was looking around for those flowers that you found, but I couldn't see them. Okay, clearly she's looking for an idol. She cannot control herself. I feel like Marion does get flustered under pressure. Like one of the things that I look for in an alliance is they don't panic and like burn to the ground and take me down with them. Paranoia can work for certain players, but Marianne is no Tony Vlachos. At Tribal Council, it is immediately clear that Jeff likes Marianne because Whenever she's talking to him, he is smiling ear to ear. She explains how the shot in the dark makes them all reevaluate how they will approach each vote this season. With that in mind, let me briefly explain what the shot in the dark is. Essentially, every player can do this once in the entire game. You get to sacrifice your vote, meaning you cannot vote, for a one in six shot at immunity. You pull a little scroll out of a bag and one of those six scrolls has immunity on it. Now, when we saw this in Survivor 41, it never worked. And in fact, Zach in the last episode just tried it and it didn't work for him. So the odds seem to be coming in favor of it actually working eventually. So before voting commences, Marion pleads to just not vote her out. Don't send me to Zach, I'm not ready, please. It's like being 23 and like always single, it's like maybe there's something wrong with you because no one romantically likes you. You, you know and it's like it's something which I've always been working on and the thing is like Zachary literally picture perfect and I'm like hey god is that you like wow is this like a two for one you win survivor and then you also get a man and then it's like in the reunion Jeff's like yeah Marianne so you started to date Zach how'd that work out and I'm like wow Jeff thank you for putting me on season 42 it's a whole big sign but like you know it's like even though the part of the game is about winning you still think about the little things too Oh, I was just getting comfortable. Oh, you want me? I can go more. I, I love some movies. <laughs> but here we go. Will Marianne be sent to the love of her life? Everyone goes to vote, and Mariah plays her shot in the dark, and... You are... not safe. First vote. Mariah. Mariah. Two votes, Mariah. Third person voted out of Survivor, 42. Mariah, that's three, that's enough. Mariah, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. That was a close one. Episode three sees Marianne openly revealing to her tribe that she has an extra vote. On one hand, she should have kept this a secret as it puts more eyes on her. On the other hand, she is doing this in such a way to show a loyalty to Taku. It's a bit risky. And not, but 20 seconds later in this episode, she is back looking for the idol again, where she reveals that she is a super fan of this show who has watched every episode except the last six of Token Sheens. Ironically, Five of those episodes are the highlight of Coach's career where he goes full Dragon Slayer for the first time. It's quite a shame. Anyways, right off the walking path on the ground under a rock. Oh my god. Oh my god. Beware advantage. If you take it, it's yours and you must do what it says. Congratulations. You have found a three-way shared immunity idol. At the next immunity challenge, you must say a secret phrase in front of the other players. Oh my god. Your phrase. Right. It's another classic case of the bunny rabbit having dinner in the mailbox. What does that even mean? Once all three phases have been said at the same immunity challenge, then all three idols have power. But until then, you cannot vote at any tribal council. <gasps> it's always off the walking path, in case you're wondering. So basically, she needs the two other tribes to find their beware advantage and say the phrase at the immunity challenge, or she is without a vote until the merge. A dangerous situation to be in. So at the immunity challenge, she makes her attempt and... You know, going to tribal sucks. And it kind of reminds me of the classic tale of the bunny rabbit eating its dinner in the mailbox. You know that one? I don't, tell okay. me. Okay, so like you see like your mailbox and you open and there's like a bunny rabbit and you're like, what's this bunny rabbit doing here? You know, it's like you don't know the whole story unless you're the bunny. I was waiting for the other tribe to say something. I heard nothing. So I didn't say anything. Thank you. Because if I can go into the merge with this secret of mine and never have to say the line, 
I have the idol and nobody knows I have it. Thankfully for Marianne, Jonathan beasts this immunity challenge and basically single-handedly keeps them safe from tribal. Episode 4 has Taku completely crushing the reward challenge and with these back-to-back -back blowout wins, all eyes are on Taku as even Jeff says out loud how amazing this tribe is, especially Jonathan. Jonathan is so overjoyed that he says, we are a tight foursome and winning is only bonding us closer together. He says this in front of everybody. Back at camp, everyone is a tad bit upset with him for saying this truthful statement in front of everyone because it gives them all less room to maneuver come the merge. But then at the immunity challenge, Marion gives it the old college try to activate her idol again and... The rain keeps on going down and going down. And it's like, I know I've said it so many times, but it just explains it so perfectly. It's the classic tale of the bunny rabbit eating it, the dinner in the mailbox, you know? And we're the bunny rabbits all being like, where's the mailbox? Like, we need to go in, we need to be warm, we need to be warm. I masterfully say my phrase and I hear nothing. Are you kidding me? Well, 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 Marianne's still in the same boat as before. The blue tribe hasn't found it yet and Mike is staying silent, but then this immunity challenge all comes down to the puzzle at the end. And once again, Marianne and Omer are working on this together. And as it turns out, Got it. Taku has it. Taku yeah, wins immunity. They crushed it. That is three now for Marianne. Episode five is everyone sitting around camp talking about Mario Kart, believe it or not. And Jonathan's face just kind of says it all. I know. Oh, you have not met me in Mario Kart before you were born. You see, correct. I'm arrogant and I know that I'm the best, so I play as my me. Oh, you're me? <laughs> yeah. How much these girls talk drives me crazy. I don't know why they always feel like there can't be silence, but there isn't five seconds without one of them. So I whip out my phone and call in sick at work and walk out. <laughs> oh my God. That is the Taku News at 7 a.m. Thank you guys and make sure you tune in. I don't even know what they're talking about. Never have I ever used hero villain smart and dumb over the course of one moment for any player marianne is just that unique and i think jonathan's kind of over her spunk that he said he liked earlier this is exasperated in a later moment when jonathan is working and marianne walks right into his chopping space and he doesn't notice her and he just chops the bamboo anyways they both get into an argument and really they're both in the wrong My yeah, foot was under down. it. Then you hit it down. You know I'm doing this. Why do you I walk was over walking, here? and then you hit okay, me. Okay, back up. Every time something little happens at camp, Marianne makes it into a, a 10 out of 10. If I'm swinging a hatchet, and then but you put your toe underneath it. this is my workspace. You came into my workspace. You're walking back and forth. Because it's all my workspace. Okay, Look, I can't argue with Marianne. I love you. Saying. I don't want to hear Okay. It. Okay. Is it just me, or is Marianne the worst? Yeah. This type of stupid fight that's rifting people apart is exactly what I don't want. The shame is too good of a freaking shield. Marianne is annoying, but she has a potential immunity idol and she has an extra vote. Like we need her. Things aren't going so well for Mary in this episode, but nonetheless, maybe third time is the charm as at the immunity challenge, she once again goes for broke to see if her beware advantage will become something more than just a piece of paper in her pocket. And it's the classic case of the bunny rabbit having dinner at the mailbox. This potato has skin. We have skin, are we just all potatoes? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We're tripping. I've always loved food, man, but like now I think I gotta marry it. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back to love. <laughs> the theme for Marianne. There is such grace in a game of soccer that it makes me cry. Finally, yes! I've been waiting so long to just hear something back. Holy crap, it finally worked. Thank the Lord she didn't need to go to tribal while not having her vote, but I would be surprised if everyone wasn't a little bit suspicious of her after saying this phrase three times. But with the actual immunity challenge, Taku falls behind thanks to Omer, and at the end, Jonathan single-handedly saves them. We move on to the merge episode, which is technically considered episodes six and seven, and right away Jeff talks to the camera and says, oh boy, I know that last season we did this hourglass twist, and uh, it was a bit unbalanced, so we made some tweaks to fix it. 
Uh, the big one is that we're adding sponsored food. And I gotta say, I don't think Jeff quite understands why this twist was broken in 41. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't sweat it. It will be explained here soon. So as everyone comes in, Jeff says, everyone drop your buffs. We are splitting you up into two groups. The winning group earns immunity and officially makes the merge. The losing group is vulnerable to be voted out. Jeff then unveils the reward that goes along with this. Marianne channels her inner charisma. It's good. It's big. It's Applebee's. I love Applebee's. Oh my God, no. no. Crunchy no. onion rings with honey barbecue sauce. Since Marion is in the group with Jonathan, they of course beast their way through the physical part with almost no issue. And when it all comes down to the puzzle at the end that Marion is working on with Lydia. So Marion basically now has immunity and gets a merge buff. However, the twist, the one that I said was controversial, is that Roxroy, who did not get picked for any group, gets sent to Exile Island where he will make an important choice, but that is still for later. For now, the team that won gets to enjoy the Applebee's merge feast and Tori from the Blue Ica tribe dumps everything she knows about her tribe to them all in an attempt to get in good and look trustworthy, and which is actually a bad look for Tori, but it's great free info for Marianne. We then see Romeo, Tori, Lydia, and Mike all talk to Marianne individually and essentially express interest in working with her. Marion says, this is awesome. So we now go to the immunity challenge for those who didn't win the previous one because Marion's obviously safe. But uh, Jeff says, hey everyone, we gave Roxroy a choice while he was on Exile Island. Basically, Roxroy had the choice of giving himself immunity and changing who else got immunity, meaning the team that lost earlier actually gets immunity and the team that won loses it, or Roxroy could deny himself immunity and everything stays the same. So what do you think was chosen? Sometimes everyone deserves a do-over. I went back and I changed history. So despite earning immunity and the merge buff earlier, it all gets stripped away by an unbalanced twist that favors one result. Fun. Now she ends up losing the individual challenge and is now vulnerable to go in a small group of five. Back at camp, Lindsay says she wants Marianne out, which is so quick for this taco group to be turning on each other. But then Omer then comes to her rescue and says, actually, I think it's a bit too soon. Why don't we vote out Lydia instead? My biggest pitch is Marianne, that she has a lot of hidden ammo. Thing is now I feel it's between Lydia and Marianne. Positive. I'm trying to bring Taku back together because at this point, Marianne has an extra vote and a hidden immunity idol. And I don't want either one of those things going out of the game because I'm gonna need weapons, I'm gonna need arsenal, and I'm gonna need an army. You were the primary at first, but I'm trying to shift it to Lydia. Why me? Like, I don't wanna go out before the merge. I've worked so hard to be here, and I'm so terrified. All I wanna do is cry and scream, but like, I know that in this game, I have to go and I have to center myself and I have to stay calm. Omer does his absolute best to change the vote and it is not at all guaranteed to work. So at tribal council, everyone goes to cast their votes and Marianne is in hot, hot water. First vote, Jonathan, Lindsay. One vote, Jonathan, one vote, Lindsay. Jonathan, two votes, Jonathan. Marianne, two votes, Jonathan, one vote, Lindsay, one vote, Marianne. Marianne, we're tied. Lydia. 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 That's three votes, Lydia. Lydia, seventh person. What did I survive of 42? Lydia, that's five, that's enough. Lydia, the tribe is spoken. Time to go. That was a dangerous situation that Lydia was screwed over by. But anyways, we slide into episode eight where Marianne says she is 100% at the bottom now, and this has her reflecting on her own insecurities. The people in the Talkie tribe are telling me, don't worry, I have your back, but I know that I'm basically at the bottom of the tribe, which honestly sucks so much. I flash back all the way back to elementary school, and it's like, I'm too weird to be a part of the cool kids. All you can think of is like, I suck, there's something wrong with me, and that's why people don't wanna work with me. Marianne being weird is exactly what makes her, her, for better or for worse. She may not be everyone's cup of tea, but that's who she is. At the reward challenge, everyone is split up into two groups again, 
Oh no. And Marianne draws the gray rock. Drea hears the reward food is peanut butter and jelly and says, nah, I'm good. And lets Marianne take her spot. This is important because due to sitting out, Drea gets the knowledge is power advantage, which allows her to steal an idol. Marianne's team ends up losing reward. And at the immunity challenge later on, Jeff forces a negotiation for a bag of rice, and he says, basically, you all need to sit out four people to get this bag of rice. However, only three volunteer, including Marianne, and she gives an impassioned speech to get a fourth person to join. We all need food, and it's like, I know that there's some people here who know that they're in a better position than me. So like, it would mean so much if you know that you're in that better position to go and like sacrifice. I'll do it. All right. Sit out. I decided to go and sit out. And you know, I'm an emotional person and I'm tearing up, I'm getting sad, and I'm really trying to ramp it up, making people feel bad about trying to vote me out. And hopefully, I'll be able to see another day. If people say you can't play this game with emotion, but look at me, using emotions as a weapon. <laughs> it ends up working. Omer joins them, and back at camp, they all get to enjoy some rice for once. And thankfully for Marianne, Chanel has become the target due to making Mike mad at a previous tribal council. And at this tribal council, Chanel is eliminated in a seven to three to one vote. Chanel, the tribe is spoken. Time for you to go. Episode nine sees everyone's being split up again for the third time in a row into two groups. As Jeff says, surprise though, it really shouldn't be at this point. We are having two separate tribal councils. Marianne is grouped with Drea, Tori, Jonathan, and Lindsay, with Jonathan winning immunity in their group. So now only four people in their group are eligible to be voted for. But Marianne has an idol, and so does Drea. Jonathan talks to Marianne and says, let's vote out Drea. We know she has an idol, and that's kind of threatening at this point in the game. Let's just get rid of her. This is a smart move, as believe it or not, Drea actually has four advantages, though Jonathan isn't aware of all of them, that she is currently sitting on. Talk about being gifted the win this season, if used correctly. Marianne likes the plan until she hears that Jonathan is telling Drea to vote for Marianne as well to make it appear that all the targets are going to be those with idols. Jonathan is like, look, we need to get Drea. Drea has an idol. She needs to go. And I'm like, OK, cool. I'm on board because I've been on out since the merge. But then he says, we're going to have Drea vote for you. And I am like, what the heck? Jonathan treats me like a young little girl, the child that needs to be led. And that's so annoying because I'm not here to be a sheep. So I'm fine with targeting Drea, but Jonathan's really getting to me. Marianne then talks to Tori and it seems fairly straightforward. Barring an idol play by Drea, she's gonna be gone in a four to one vote. Upon arriving at tribal council, everything goes off the rails as they see the other group that went to tribal before them. They voted out Roxroy, which by the way, the story has been basically foreshadowing since episode one. Roxroy has been a long time coming. Drea says seeing this changes everything. Now you may be wondering, what does she mean by that? Well, seeing back to back black people be voted out has her on edge. And she says, I am playing my idol tonight to avoid what she perceives as something that occurs every single season. Marianne is on the same page as Drea and says, I morally cannot vote her out. Look, Chanel goes out, okay, that's fine. That's one thing. Roxroy goes out, that's another person. I write Drea's name out, that's three black people in a row, okay? And Survivor isn't just about st strategy, it's not. Survivor is also about bringing the social world big into a small thing. If I write Drea's name right now, that means that I'm a part of a perpetuating problem. So it's like the same thing over and over again. Again and again and sucks. again. I can't do it. it. So like we can figure something else out, but I morally cannot write her name down. I'm playing that is my, my idol, line. so you have to figure something I else out. You. I knew it was coming from me. So that, let's play. Lindsay is very supportive of them, but Jonathan is confused because to him, it seems like they're saying that targeting Drea or Marianne tonight would be racist after Drea just helped vote out Chanel in the last episode. And the storytelling supports what he is saying as nothing at all has supported this Chanel or Roxroy vote out as having anything to do with race. This was a bad move by him though, as it is then explained that this is not explicitly racist, but the decision to vote out three black players in a row would be subconscious bias that Marianne says is not easily seen. Now, if this seems like whiplash to you after how the story has played out so far, that's because it is. Nothing like this has been brought up prior in this season, and it disappears from the storytelling in the very next episode. 
Marianne and Drea both basically say, we are playing our idols to prove that we are safe, not because of this topic being brought up, but because we earned it. My biggest fear was that I would see some sort of injustice and I would sit down and do nothing. And like, I'm not saying that it's an injustice for Chanel and Roxroy to be voted out because like, I don't know the full story, but if I let that pattern continue, that's an injustice for me and my experience as a black woman. And especially coming on like Survivor, where it's like, you know, millions of people will be watching. It feels like I have to do it because who else will? It's like so frustrating how I have to then incorporate that to the way that I play the game. Yes, we all technically have a one in 18 shot for the million, but because we all come with our burdens and we all come with our privileges, that one in 18 might be bigger or smaller for some people and that sucks. Good job, guys. Good job, y'all. I can settle this quickly. These are both hidden immunity idols. Dre is not going home. Marianne is not going home. So now Tori and Lindsay are the only ones eligible and in a weird set of circumstances that has not happened since the infamous Jeff Farner vote in season 34. The vote is done verbally in front of everybody. Everyone says out loud, yeah, we're voting you out, Tori. So Tori says, I guess I'll go play my shot in the dark then. And as it turns out, Tori, you are not safe. Tori, the child has spoken. No! Uh, By the way, The Shot in the Dark has been used four times across two seasons, and it has yet to work once. With that, we move on to episode 10, where Marianne is a little annoyed she had to use her idol when she was in no danger of going home, but no worries, as she smartly takes a stroll on the walking path. And what is that at just eye height? And I see this tree, like, right at the corner, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Who has the huge family the moon? It's a freaking moon, the idol! I'm not telling anyone about this. This one is going to be my secret and my secret alone. I just found my second immunity idol, baby. I'm literally shook it. This time she is actually going to keep it a secret though, which is a good call. After the immunity challenge, the consensus vote seems to be high as Marianne and Lindsay agree that since he isn't early in their plans for the end of the game, he needs to go. At Tribal Council, Marianne explains this game is a lot like Jenga. The way that I see it, it's kind of like Survivor Jenga, right? Where it's like, okay, I need to take a piece out, but that piece is going to come back into play. But what happens if I take a bottom piece too early? Will everything fall? Do I have to then take that piece later? Or do I want to take that piece because I think someone else wants that piece, so I stop them from having that piece so I can have that piece? Jonathan, did you track that? Yes. So after that funny display of emotion by Marianne, everyone goes to vote and High is gone in a six to two landslide. And he takes this with such a positive attitude. Hi, the tribe spoke. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Episode 11 begins with Marianne losing a toenail and says, this is pretty common. This happens a few times a year. People are like Marianne, that's not normal. But truly Marianne has already said she is weird. So this just kind of fits her perfectly. She then acknowledges that she is currently not a big threat in the game, which is good for now. But if she doesn't turn it around, then she will lose at the end of the game. Clearly right now, I'm not as big of a threat as people think they am, which is a blessing because that means I'm probably safe for the next tribal, but a curse because if people don't think you're a threat, how are you going to win at the end? But I've been really taking a step back because in your someone who's a big threat, you're the next one out. Marianne's awareness here is spot on, but the question is, what will she do to turn around this perception of her? We see some perceptions of other players like Romeo being lazy and just eating rice all day. And we see Jonathan annoying most of the women with how he talks to them. In fact, the women say, hey, if Jonathan doesn't win immunity, he is next to go. So at the immunity challenge, Jeff says we are doing something contradictory to the social game of Survivor by forcing whoever drops first out of this challenge to play a game of chance. If you lose, you play the do or die game. Marianne wisely doesn't participate in the immunity challenge so that she doesn't have a chance to get screwed by this. And with that, Jonathan wins immunity and Lindsay is forced to play do or die. Everyone then considers what do we do if Lindsay survives and we have to vote someone out? Drea is still sitting on three advantages. And Marion says, if Drea is at the end, she is winning. So I think she needs to go next. At Tribal Council, Lindsay plays do or die. And in one of these boxes is a flame. Flame represents life. Two of these boxes have a skull. Skull represents death. Okay, middle box. Before we open your box, I'm gonna open one of these two boxes. The skull. The last twist is you can swap them if you want. Oh, so I'm gonna go with my gut. 
you're gonna stay with what you chose. Yeah. You drew the flame, oh you are safe. Well, well, well. Drea sees the writing on the wall and uses her knowledge as power advantage to try and steal Mike's idol, which is the only idol in the game that everyone is aware of. And... Mike, do you have an idol? No. <gasps> oh. Why did this fail? Well, we get a flashback to Mike being told by Omer that this is going to happen. So Mike gets rid of his idol temporarily so that Drea can't steal it from him. Basically, Omer and Mike outsmarted Drea. Drea then burns advantage number three as she uses her extra vote and is still eliminated five to three, where Drea then tries to do the high thing where, ah, I'm in such a great move, but actually he's making gay moves after being voted out, namely against Omer. Omer, you're the only person I told this secret to and I want everyone else to know that. The tribe has spoken. <laughs> is it fair that she got to do this after being voted out? I'll let you be the judge. Though Jeff lets it happen, so I guess it must be fair. Episode 12 sees Mike telling Marianne that Omer is gunning for him, so Mike wants Omer gone next. Marianne realizes that actually eliminating Omer could be the game-changing move she needs on her resume, as he has been dictating a lot of what has happened in the post-merge game. Mike is right. At Tribal Council, what the jury saw was Omer just go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. This was someone who was sitting in the background and like, boom, he's the reason why Drea was gone. And I'm like, there is no way that I can beat him. So I'm thinking, being like, okay, there always comes a time in this game when you have people that you trust, but the people that you trust, if you know they can beat you, you have to do something. This is honestly a hard decision because I know Omer and I love Omer and I trust Omer and Omer's one of the people who's grounded me these past 22 days. But if I don't make this move, I'm not going to win. And it's terrifying. At the reward challenge, everyone has to spin and spin, which causes Marion to laugh and be clumsy and just straight up fall. But she's having such a good time, which is typical. She does get too dizzy and tries to reverse the effect. He's coming back. Here comes Romeo. Marianne is now trying to unspin to reverse her dizziness. She's never seen anything like it. Omer ends up winning reward, and he takes Marianne, Romeo, and Mike with him. After they gorge themselves on some chocolate cake, Mike talks to Marianne and says, if you help me vote out Omer, then I promise I will play my idol for you at the final five, which is the last time both of their idols are good for. You're going to four. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Because I have one idol, mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. I hear your name at five, mm -hmm. it's playing for you. Double protection at final five, what's not to like? Mike then reveals to Marianne that Lindsay has an idol that only works through the final six, meaning it has to be played at this next tribal, otherwise it's no good. And really, both players are surprised by this news. Mike is surprised that Marianne didn't already know about this, and Marianne is surprised that Lindsay kept this a secret from her because they're kind of aligned. Yes, Marianne is keeping a secret too, but she's keeping it from everyone, whereas Lindsay is keeping this from some people. This forces a reevaluation of their alliance. Lindsay then talks to Marianne and says, I want Jonathan out, and Marianne enthusiastically says, yeah, of course, but really, she's not agreeing at all. Marianne says, if she needs to, she will use her extra vote to get out Omer tonight. Lindsay wins immunity, and the fear is that she will now give her idol to Omer because she doesn't need it, she has the necklace. Marianne then talks to Mike about splitting votes in case this does happen, and Mike and Jonathan are both too scared to go for Omer, and they say, let's just do something easier, like Romeo. You're going to tell Jonathan, vote Omer. How about we just say, say, we're not gonna get Omer out tonight. Please, trust me on this one, please. Lindsay wins the immunity challenge. She doesn't need her immunity idol. I'm thinking Lindsay gives Omar her immunity idol, except Marianne wants to play Survivor 18.0 instead of 2.0. Mike is just trying to play it safe because people can feel the final five. And when people can feel it and they don't have that necklace on their neck, they get paranoid. But I have my extra vote and my two votes give me a lot of power tonight. Marion realizes if they won't help her, then she will need to figure this out herself. Now she knows Lindsay and Omer are gonna vote for whoever they're voting for. Mike and Jonathan are voting for Romeo. So with that 2-2 split, she needs Romeo to vote with her, along with her extra vote, to make a Sari like move here at the final six. She godfathers Romeo by forcing him into secrecy. Nothing from this conversation can leak. I Nothing. swear. Marianne tells Mike and Jonathan, go ahead and vote for Romeo in case Omer does play his idol, and then we can just get Romeo on the revote as a backup. This is truly Marianne attempting to control the game. At Tribal Council, Lindsay doesn't play her idol, and she doesn't give it to Omer out of complete confidence that things will go their way. So, Jeff reveals the votes, and... 
Jonathan. Romeo. Jonathan. Romeo. Omer. Omer. I did it. I did it. 13th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Omer. Oh, wow. Omer? The tribe has spoken. Good job. Finale time. It is Marianne versus Mike versus Romeo versus Jonathan versus Lindsay, who will survive the last two tribal councils to get to the end and have a shot at convincing the jury to give them the million dollars and the title of sole survivor. Let's find out. Keep in mind, Mike and Marianne both have idols that are only good through the next vote, so on paper, they should be safe. But then again, on paper, Lindsay should have played her idol for Omar at the last tribal, so nothing's guaranteed. Marianne says it is now time to seal the deal and become the winner of Survivor 42. Right away, all of them are dropped on a new beach with no shelter and no food, but Marianne doesn't mind. This new beach has nothing. We don't have a tarp, we don't have a shelter, but you know what? I was on cloud nine because by voting out Omer, now everybody on the jury knows Marianne is here to play. After building their campfire, Romeo says, by the way, I am safe for the next vote because I have an idol I've been keeping secret from all of you. And you may be asking yourself, when did he find this idol? Well, the answer to that is he didn't. He made a fake one. And judging by the reactions, no one cares. Romeo, at this point, is a goat to be dragged to the final three, and everyone pretty much knows this. Marianne then talks to Lindsay and says, I want you in the final three with me, which, by the way, is a mistake. At this point, the two easiest people to beat would be Romeo and Jonathan. I want you, I literally want you to win. I want to win my final three. Everyone is then given a chance for the last advantage of this season. You have to unscramble a phrase, and that phrase will lead you to this advantage somewhere on the island. Lindsay solves this phrase right away and rushes off, and Marianne knows she could solve it but all the guys are like hey let's work together so we can stop Lindsay and Marianne doesn't want to stop Lindsay so she's like I guess I'm gonna sandbag this thing to help Lindsay which ends up working they don't actually solve the phrase and Lindsay does find the advantage with that she actually gets a boost at the next immunity challenge she has to do less things than everyone else despite this at the immunity challenge Mike pulls out the victory in a close close race between him and Lindsay to solve the puzzle. It's literally one piece off, but now he has no need for his hidden immunity idol. Mike then talks to Marianne and says, can we really beat Lindsay? Marianne says, I think I could squeak out a win over her, but Lindsay has made friends with most of the jury while also winning immunity challenges. She really hasn't gotten under anyone's skin. It is admitted that Jonathan would be easier to beat than her. At Tribal Council, Marianne tells Jeff how she struggles with picking people based on how she feels versus what she knows is factually the best move for her. AKA, this is the struggle she is currently having on whether to vote out Lindsay or not. She could very well play her idol for Lindsay, she says, and make a move on her resume. Be like, hey, I saved Lindsay. Look at what I did. But this would be dangerous because can she beat Lindsay in the final three? Marianne's not 100% sure. Mike plays his idol for Marianne, believe it or not, and in a baller move, Marianne decides to not play her idol for Lindsay, keeping it a secret still. I'm gonna play this for Marianne. Okay. Romeo reveals to everyone his idol is fake, and the jury is shown not caring at all. Then, in a four to one vote, Lindsay is eliminated. The tribe is spoken. We then cut from that tribal council to the final immunity challenge, where Jeff prompts every single person to give a sob story. Now, that's not to undercut what Marianne's about to say, it's just that all four people have a sob story. Marianne says her hopes are that her being on Survivor will bring her family back together because for over a year now, they haven't all been together in the same place. And she says, if that were to happen, that would be more valuable to her than a million dollars. I want it more than a million dollars. I sit in the sorrow and sadness. It's okay to feel sad, but the thing is, sadness doesn't take you anywhere. It's what you do with that. What am I gonna do with my sadness? I'm gonna turn it into passion and drive so that I push myself and I do the best that I can and I win this competition. In a surprising turn of events, Mike drops out of the challenge first on a mistake and Romeo, of all people, actually wins immunity. It's quite unexpected. Back at camp, Mike and Romeo talk about how bad it would be if Marion and Mike were both in the final three. 
as Romeo would really have no chance at winning. Romeo says, I agree with this, but it is pretty clear he's still going to force Mike and Jonathan to make fire anyways, since he gets to make that decision. So whoever wins this fire at the final four is going to make it to the final three, whereas Romeo is going to bring Marion with him for free. Marion wants Jonathan to win, as then her path to winning would be that much easier. So she's like, Jonathan, here's every tip and trick I know on how to win this fire making competition. Please pull this out. At Tribal Council, Romeo picks Marianne as expected to go to Final 3, which is great for her, and it's bad for Romeo. But then, in a fire-making showdown, where Marianne wants Jonathan to win... Here it is! Yes! The tribe has spoken. Not the greatest result, but Marianne will just have to make do. Then in a twist we haven't seen since the very early seasons of the show, we hear from the jury about what they expect at Final Tribal. They basically express what they want from each of the final three in order to get their vote. And this is actually a great twist. I love this. Keep in mind, Marion's going to need four or five votes, depending on how the eight jurors vote, to win this game. What we learned from the jurors talking about each of them before the final tribal is that Tori is basically a lock for Marianne as she fangirls over her and sees a lot of herself in Marianne. Drea straight up says, I'm a feminist who likes Marianne. Um, and I'm just going to call this a lock based on that and the shared moment that they had at Tribal Council a few episodes back and the fact that Marianne is facing two guys. So she should win the feminist part of that. On the other side of the fence is Lindsay who says, I don't think Marianne really did anything, so she's gonna have to tell me something she did because right now I'm unimpressed. And High says, uh, Marianne will need to articulate her game moves because I also am unaware about what she did. Marianne says at Final Tribal Council, her best move will to simply be honest about her game and own what she did and did not do. Don't hide and don't deny. To be successful tonight, I need to go and be honest about my game. At this point, the roller coaster has already moved. There's no getting out, which means when I go down, I have to raise my hands and scream and be like, this is what I did in these past 26 days. It is time, final tribal council. It is Marianne versus Mike versus Romeo. Who will win the jury over and earn the crown of sole survivor? Let's find out. Right away, we see Hai is wearing a shirt that says feminist on it. He wore this to a tribal knowing who the final three were. So I'm calling this a lock for Marianne. That is three locked votes, so she only needs one or two more depending on how people vote for Mike and Romeo. Which is great for Marianne as she has a leg up. The discussions begin starting with social gameplay where it is explained that it seems like Marianne did not take the game seriously. Marianne says, this is true, but that was all strategy. So me not taking the game seriously was actually a part of my strategy. When I came into the merge, I realized that there was a trend. If you were young, like under 25, and you seemed like you were strategic, you would be voted out. Corey, you were under 25, you were showed that you were strategic, and you were on the bottom for the whole time. So I basically had to pretend that I had no strategy, and then when there were fewer people, I'd be able to start to show my strategy further and further in the game. On the plus side for Marianne is how Mike, her only real competition at this point, completely misreads the room on how to talk to the jury, and it's a bit argumentative. It seems like how they perceived his game and how he perceived his game we're not the same, and he's not quite understanding why they think the way they do. We then hear from Marianne that she made adjustments throughout the game to better herself, like be less annoying after the merge, and move to pull in Romeo to knock out Omer. We then move to the physical discussion of Final Tribal, where Romeo says, my physical prowess in this game was learning how to swim and getting an immunity win, which is a stark contrast, if you think about it, to Mike being a selfless worker bee for the tribe and Marianne also doing things around camp for others. So one of the things which I did was weave palm fronds. So when we were all still gung-ho about weaving palm fronds, I showed most of my tribe, hey, this is how we weave it. And I also used it for other things. I made Omer's prayer mat. This is just an example to show that I weave palm fronds. Another thing which I knew how to do is I was very, very good at scaling and gutting fish. My family, we're, we're Luo, which is a tribe from Kenya, and we love eating tilapia. So when you buy it in like little buckets of it, you have to individually scale them and gut them. So I've always been growing up watching my mom doing this. So even though I can't catch a fish, I can go and be like, thank you for bringing this fish. I'm gonna prepare it so you don't have to do that work. 
the strategy portion of Final Tribal is last. And with that comes some big moves here by Marianne. First is how once again, no one cares about Romeo's fake idol. But when Marianne explains how she didn't even play her idol that she had, she guaranteed herself final three still. My one big move that I did was set myself up to be in the final three with multiple combinations with Omer's vote. Let me explain to you why. When I voted out Omer, Mike gave me his word that he will give me his idol at the final five, and that would guarantee me the final four. But then, you know, you might be like, Mike backed on his word, so like, how were you so sure? And the reason is, I kept the only secret in this game. I actually, after your vote, Tori, had the merch idol. I can show it to you right now. Ooh. And I told no one about it. You can see it over here. Here's the idol. Here's the note. So now we're then off to my final four. Jonathan, Mike, me, and Romeo. So that meant that if I won, I'm going to the end because I'm not making fire. If Mike won, he gave me his word that I would go to the end. If Romeo won, Romeo was afraid of Mike, he would take me to the end. And if Jonathan won, he would want to go and have that final big move to take Mike out, and Romeo and I would be at the end. By taking you out, Omer, I gave myself the best position to be sitting. That reaction kind of says it all. Mike nor Romeo have garnered anything like that in this final tribal. Marion then puts a cap on her story this season when she talks about how growing up she feared rejection. And this game taught her that while she still has room to grow, she needs to overcome this fear. I really wanted to bring Lindsay to the end when in my mind I'm like, I cannot beat Lindsay. Cause that means that I wanted to go and give myself an easy out because I didn't want to feel that rejection of friendship. I kind of knew that that's how I self-sabotage. Like when I was young, I used to push people away so they couldn't go and hurt me first. And it's like to know that I do it in something that I love too, it's like, it shows that I still need to grow as a person and I'm still growing. I really, really was so, so close to playing my idol for you like before we went to tribal, but I'm like, Marianne, you need to grow and you need to make yourself open. Like I knew that I still had to take that chance to lose because I deserve that chance to win. Everyone goes to vote for the winner and Jeff says, surprise, we aren't doing a live reunion and vote reveal like we did for seasons two through 40. In this new era of Survivor, we do it on the island like in season one. So he reads the votes for the winner and... First vote, Mike. Marianne. 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 Three votes, Marianne. Marianne. The winner of Survivor 42. Marianne. So let's break this down. How is Marianne as a character? Marianne wore her heart on her sleeve while also being someone who was never dull. Seriously, there is never a time all season where you see Marianne being, oh, I'm so tired or oh, I'm so hungry. In fact, I don't know if Marianne knows what tiredness is. I'm sure she experienced these feelings, but the story we saw shows that she is going 100 miles per hour all the time which reminds me of Tony Vlachos actually. Now this did work to her detriment in the beginning, but once she kind of got it under wraps, once she was able to do what she needed to do to still be herself, but also keep it under control, she became more universally likable, seemed like. I can safely say, Marianne is the first of her kind in 42 seasons, as no one comes before her that I can compare in personality. And she was joyous to watch all the time, and she tried to keep it real, and it makes her very relatable for a lot of viewers. Out of 26 characters, moments shown on the show, 21 were heroic and 5 were villainous, making Marianne a hero character on Survivor 42. Now how is Marianne as a strategist? Ah, uh, she didn't start off so good. Had Taku gone to tribal council after the Mariah vote, Marianne was likely gone, especially when she was unable to vote. But thankfully, like all winners before her, she had luck on her side as she reached the merge and realized that her game that she had been playing so far wasn't as good as she thought it was. She was saved by Omer at the merge, but then after that, Marion kind of came into her own as she made bigger and bigger moves until final tribal council, where she convinced the jury to not vote for the obvious winner in Mike and instead pick her. Believe it or not, Marion is actually the first black female winner since season four in Vesepia, and for that, that's a huge accomplishment. Out of 53 strategic moments shown on the show, 37 were smart and 16 were dumb, making Marianne a smart strategist on Survivor 42. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. This verse I'm about to show you actually was handpicked by Marianne. So thank you, Marianne. See you all next time.